we're going to talk about resident portal and reservations. So uh, you might have already experienced, I know I sent an email to some of you, and I think three people have already hit some reservations in our system, so I know it's working. But we'll go through and we'll talk about resident portal and reservations. So to kick things off, first things first. Um, reservations will be taken through our new resident portal. It may also be made over the phone or in person at the host desk of the desired location. We're going to start these July 1st, aka tomorrow. Really, we're kicking it off Sunday the 3rd. Uh, so it gives a couple days to practice, and then we'll go into reservations. So the <laughs> reservations, we'll start those the 11th. Um, online available anytime, but we'd like to start with the phone orders to be taken through the no North Host Desk during lunchtime between 12 and 2. Kind of the same procedure that we did before. Some of you might have had experience with that. That should be a time where we can really get in touch with the host at the desk. Um, and that way we're not playing telephone tag. So. Where we picked July 1st, we're planning to open up the pub on the 18th, so that's a week before, and it's not kicking it off right away, so we'll get our week of practice with the main dining room with reservations, and then we'll go into the pub, so kind of easing into this process here. But now we'll look at the resident portal. So when you follow the link, this will be the screen that you see, kind of a real simple website. You can access it online, or if you go through our app, there's a dining section, but there's also another section that says resident portal full count. If you click on that, it will take you right to this screen that you see here. So, well, we, this is the login screen. So, from this screen, you're gonna have to type in your username and password. So, your username will be your first name, period, last name, no spaces between the period, and it is case sensitive, so the first letter needs to be capitalized. So you can see my example in the black here, John.Smith. My John Smith that I created was a fake resident for me to test things out, and I didn't know about the capital, so if you look on the actual screenshot, it's not capital, but yours does need to be. The pat Just the first name? the first letter of each name. So if you look here, where it says capital J, capital S. So first name, first letter capital, last name, first letter capital. Yes, it is a period and no spaces. So if you're doing it on the computer, usually it'll save your login credentials and you might not have to manually type it in. I haven't tested that on the app, but if you're working on your tablet or your computer and you're doing the website, that should be able to save on there. Um, your password to start, kind of like your login name, it'll be your last name and your apartment number. So capital of the last name, so Smith, and let's say John Smith lives in R123. So it'd be capital S with Smith, no space right into the apartment number with capital of your letter, and then your room number. So once you get all this through, you'll be brought to this screen and it'll ask you to register your email. So this is kind of beneficial in a few ways. In case you forget your password or your login name, there's prompts for you when you're logging in to, hey, I forgot my password, let me click this. It'll email you a password reset or you can always come find one of us managers, we'll help you out there too. Um, also, when you're making your reservations, it'll send you an email confirmation, hey, we've received your reservation, and 15 minutes before your reservation is about to happen, it'll say, hey, remember you have a reservation at five o'clock, so in case you get sidetracked, you'll get an email. I'll do questions at the end, Dan. I, I do not have an email. Okay, we'll, we'll do questions at the end, Dan. So to add your email, you'll need to type in your email address in both sections under the update email address. So you'll put both of those, then you'll select update email address, and then you will get sent an email to confirm it. So check your email. There'll be a little link. 
click that, and then you'll confirm your email. And then you're all set. So now here's our home screen. Once you first log in, you get through the email address. This is the My Info section. It has all of your info. We have resident name, apartment number, your portal name, which is your login name. And then where it says registered email address, that would be where your email will show if you've registered it. Um, one thing what I would suggest to do, you'll see the update my password. So if we click on that, you'll be able to set your own password. In case you're worried your neighbor might log into your account, set a reservation for them, and then Frank's gonna get in trouble because he has two reservations over there. Um, but, so your current password would be your last name, apartment number, and then you can type in on the new and confirm, whatever you'd like to set it as, and then it'll be your private account, basically. I know a number of people that don't have computers. Yeah, we'll touch on that afterwards. So, once we adjust our password, and if you hit submit, you're all set there. Now, if you need help log in, any of us managers, like I said, maybe not Lee as much, he might not be as technically savvy as the rest of us, but um, myself, Donna, Daniela, or Maddie, we can help you out through that. And we can also reset your password on our end of things. So, now we'll go into reservations. Now, when you first logged in, you were on that My Info tab. There's also a reservations tab at the very top. So at this screen, you'll see where it says make reservation as well as your reservations. So we'll go through the process of making a reservation so you kind of see all the steps. And then when we're done, it'll pop up right on that bottom list there. So clicking on the my reservation or make reservation, excuse me, you'll be brought to this screen. So you can kind of see there's the north dining room and south dining room. Initially put on lunch, we're not gonna have lunches, but you'll have North Dining Dinner and then Sunday North Brunch down to South Dining Room, South Dining Room Dinner or Sunday South Dinner. So those are different time periods of the day and the meal period, so they do have to be brought out into a separate category. Later on, you'll see Gourmets, Breezeways, Bella Row as a different dining venue, so keep a lookout for that too. So, when selecting where you'd like to eat, again, be mindful Sundays are separate. And then currently reservations are not needed for the North Dining Room lunch, as well as breakfast or lunch in the pub. So it's really only for dinner and Sunday brunches. So once we select a venue, you'll be brought to a calendar to select the day. So navigate through the calendar, you can adjust your month where it is in orange there. Arrow for June, you can go over to July if needed. You'll click on the day that you want to make a reservation for, and then you'll click continue. And we can go up to 31 days in advance. So if you're one that's has a reservation or you eat with the same group every day, you can make it for the whole month basically. So once we select that day, you hit continue, you'll be brought to your party size. So there's an up and down arrow. You can select what kind you want. I believe on the app, at least for my phone, as soon as I get to this page, it pushes up a thing to type a number in. So you won't even have to up or down arrow that. So you'll select how many people we want. Here we have two. We do, if you have more than 10 people in your group, we do need you to talk to the host desk because more information might be needed. We'll have to push more tables together than our usual reservations. So once we get through the party size, now you get to see what time. So they're in 15 minute segments. So you'll click on whatever time you'd like. If it is showing, it is available. I know some residents were asking, well, what happens if there's not a lot of, or there's too many people at that certain time, what will happen? Well, once we hit our limit for that time, it'll just go away. So I'm sure five o'clock will be taken out first. It'll go 4.45, right into 5.15. So that's your time section. Once you click on one of those, hit continue. 
Now you get a little summary of everything that you put in. So double check it, make sure it's right. Maybe we accidentally hit Tuesday instead of Monday, or time might be different. So at that point, you can hit edit for any type, any section that you're looking for, or maybe a friend just called, you wanna add them, so it needs to be three people instead of two. So the big part here, you must click submit, otherwise we're not getting it. So you have to click submit from here, just because you see everything correct in there. If you exit out or close the app, we won't get it. So make sure you hit submit. And then it'll ask you, do you want email confirmation? So you can either type in your email, and like I said, if you previously registered your email, it'll automatically be there, and then you'll just hit send confirmation. Maybe you don't want confirmation, it's not your first time, you trust the system, you can just close out, don't worry about it, email confirmation. But after that, it'll take you back to your reservations tab, and if you see, we now have a reservation for two people on Tuesday. So as you start to plug it in more and more reservations, that list will grow. And you can check and see, and as soon as we see it in the dining room, it'll pull it off your list so you shouldn't be seeing any old ones. So that's the reservations. Now I figured I'd brush a little bit on account summary because people are adventurous, they'll go around in this app. Now, account summary, I have two different examples. The lower one here is if you're on that bistro meal plan where you'll have your declining balance of meal credits. So it'll have your dollar amount, how much you started with, your activity, what you have left. With the meal of the day, it is a point system. So you have one point per day. If you look at that test person up top, they've used, what does it say, 13 meals? and they went, it says remain balance negative four, I think. That's because they had a couple meals a day, so that'll be four meals out of pocket. But that's the account summary. The more you work with it, the more you'll see. On the bottom here, it says charge account, and then charge has zero dollars because they didn't get anything ancillary. So this down here will show you your ancillary, Questions? Go ahead, Dan. Ancillary would be, say, delivery charges, or if you go to our Enchanted Evening, or the ancillary charges, yeah. that's what that was. That'd be a delivery charge, our Enchanted Evening, or wine pairing dinner, anything that's not going to be part of the meal program. Right. Question. Uh, two questions. Number one, the club reservation is not on your left, is that correct? Yes. After the club reservation, you really have to have a question. Go ahead and ask me my phone, I'll repeat it. If you have reservations at the pub, how do you take off the reservation to the dining room? That's number one question. Number two question, the pub gets jammed up many times. How do you limit the two reservations per week per resident? So the question was, if you make reservations upstairs in the dining room, how do you cancel that if you want to eat in the pub? The other question we'll get to in a second. So the first question is, why did you make reservations in the pub if you were going to eat in the dining room, or vice versa? Okay, so we asked that you actually just make the reservations for the venue that you want. It's really that simple. So if you're going to eat in the pub, eat in the pub. If you want to eat in the dining room, eat in the dining room. If you need to cancel a reservation for whatever reason, please reach out to the host desk and we'll just cancel the reservation, correct? Correct. So, the other question that you ask is what happens if anything gets jammed up? No, I'm saying, can you make them at the two reservations per resident per week? And it's we will worry about the reservations as far as people in the amount as we move forward. At this point in time, we have no plans on limiting the amount of people that can eat where they want to eat, other than capacity. So if we've hit 100 people in the room, we can't get any more in there because we're only at a capacity of 100 people. 
but we are not limiting the amount of people. Say Jean wants to eat down at the pub every single day. If she wants to do that and there are open reservations, have at it. If that becomes a problem, we will deal with that later on when that problem arises. But right now, that problem is not even on our radar. Yes, sir. I'm Daniel Singer. And to start with, this thing is ridiculous. We're senior citizens, you know, mature people. I can't even remember my grandchildren's names, let alone all this that I have to do. And besides, I don't have a computer. Okay, so the question is, what happens if you become a little unable, for whatever reason, to be able to manage your way through this system? Go to the host desk. You, the host desk can make a reservation for you. Ricky and I were talking about this today. Say, I'm gonna use you again, Jean. Uh, Jean comes to dinner on Tuesday night. She finishes her dinner, she stops by the host desk. Oh, dinner was awesome, thank you so much. Ricky did such a great job with the menu. I wanna come back tomorrow. Can I make a reservation for the same time tomorrow? We'll pull it up on the computer. Five o'clock is full because, well, you're a little bit late, sorry, but we do have a 5.15. You be eating with Linda? Okay, so that's a reservation for two? No problem, we have you for tomorrow at 5.15. You can just stop right at the host desk. Now you're just talking about the I am talking about every venue on campus, except for lunches. Right. So. Do we always have to make a reservation every night? Yes. Okay. Yes. You make a reservation every single night. Just like if you, one second, Rita. Just like if you were going out to eat at Swordfish like Johnny's new favorite restaurant. Every single night we ask you that did you make a reservation. What if you don't know during the day what you're going to be doing that night? Well then you can, you can, you can show up at the, at the host desk and say, hi, I'd like to eat. At which point they will say, that's awesome. We have an opening in 45 minutes. Would you like to come back? Please, this has been tried and tested at multiple communities. It really does work. Now I said, Rita, we that we don't live here. You're correct, you live here, we're trying to improve it. So you did say that say you do walk in at five o'clock and there, there just isn't any tables. It's the same as it is now. We're gonna get to you when, you, when we can and we're trying to decrease the amount of people sitting around no. waiting in the, at the host desk. In the, please, Rita. So at that point, we, we let you talk, Rita. I'd like to talk. So we're really just trying to decrease the amount of waiting on your part. As some people in this room will only go to restaurants if they have a reservation. At that point, you will be able to, Jean again, will be able to walk in at five o'clock. She has a five o'clock reservation. Hi, how you doing? It's Linda and I, let's go. And we'll bring you right to your table. It's really that simple. We're trying to get it to the point where there is less waiting. There is less congregating around the host desk. Maybe there's less people standing around that might have COVID. And so at that point, it, it, it eases up on the traffic flow. As well, as Ricky has pointed out multiple times, generally speaking, during holidays, everything goes fairly well. And one of the reasons for that is because we have reservations. We don't get a monstrous influx of 100 people at 5 p.m. or noon. Everything is spaced out so that the servers, the kitchen staff, the managers, the hosts, don't become overwhelmed with ultimately a wave of humans trying to all get fed at the same time. We're just trying to get that out there. Much like everything else, 
We're asking you to try it. Yes, sir, Eleanor had her hand up first. Hold on one second. I would like to say, let's give this a chance. Uh, I was down at Bradenton where uh, we had different uh, residents having to stay because their apartment uh, is being uh, remodeled. Uh, they have reservations there, and they said it works beautifully. Uh, there's no waiting. They just go and they say their name. They look, they look down at, and they tell you what, what table to go to. Uh, they are fine. They said their system is wonderful, and it does work. And I, I think we should give this a chance before we keep complaining. Stairs right now waiting for a table. That's, right. That's exactly what we're trying to avoid. Wow. Reservations. Okay. I, 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 you need more sorry. help than you, and you, the same thing's going to happen. So, so, Rita, we can only produce so much food out of any particular kitchen with so many staff. If okay. every single resident here had their own particular server Maybe. and we followed that person hey, around. Rita, please days. hold on. on. Rita, please hold on. If every single resident here had their own private server, they still wouldn't get fed any faster. There's only so much space in the kitchen. There's only so much food that can be produced at any given time. And remember, we can't fill up the entire dining room all at once. So please, reservations. If you're worried about it, give it a shot. If you're worried about it and you don't think it's gonna work, well, at least try and have a little bit of an open mind. One second. July the 1st it starts, yes. So at that point you feel free as soon as you leave here to get on the app and play with it. Yes, I'll hold it because it's... When I call to make uh, a takeout, I, I usually get a recorded so I'm not able to talk to anyone directly. There are many people here who do not have smartphones or computers. They'll be faced to call. And I'm wondering whether you'll have additional lines than you have now because it's going to be a, a real uh, hold up because they won't be able to handle all the calls. So, so, the question, so the question was, what happens when somebody tries to make a reservation for the South Dining Room at 10 a.m. and there's nobody at the host desk? Is ultimately what it is. And yes, you can call and you can leave a message. Um, I highly recommend that if you do not have a smartphone, computer, um, and you, you are not set up in any way to be able to do this on your own, then please face to face at a host desk. It will be the easiest and best way. We're not increasing the amount of time that we will have people available at the host desks. There is always somebody at the host desk for lunch in the north. So if you call the south building to make a uh, to make to place a takeout order, at that point, if you want to say at two o'clock or sometime prior to us being in the south host. Call the North and make a reservation because the North building at lunch will be able to make a reservation for you at the pub in the South, the North, the Breezeway, Bella Row, Gourmet, Canted Evening, anywhere, really. So at that point, if you do need to talk to somebody, 
please feel free to call the north for the reservations. I'm on my way right in, right in the back. And so Dustin has done the math, and I, I, I truly put almost all of my faith in Dustin's ability to do math. It's, it's really seven plus seven plus seven, right? Okay, so at that point, he has figured out how many tables and how many residents we can accommodate at any given time. And he set up the system so that regardless of how many people want to eat there, we'll be able to accommodate the people that have reservations because we've limited the amount of numbers that, that's available at that time slot. Now you mentioned as well, restaurants have empty, we have empty tables. You're right, we do have empty tables because if you go to a restaurant, they have empty tables. I've been to a restaurant, I was there last weekend. The restaurant, I walked in, I said, hi, I'd like a table. They said, do you have a reservation? I said, no, I was driving by and I got hungry and thirsty. I said, okay, no worry about it. It'll be a minute. I sat down at the bar. There was one other table being used in the restaurant. One. I still didn't get a table. Why? They only had one server on, and that one server was busy. So yes, restaurants do have a lot of tables, and oftentimes they have a lot of staff, but you can only seat however many you can take care of at a time. If we had 30 servers, again, it wouldn't help the situation. We, we still can't produce that much food. We still can't get everybody out. If we had 30 servers in the kitchen, it would be bumping into each other. So we do have a system. We've had the same amount of staff on our schedule for years, and it works very well. We just need to reservation. Space it out, exactly. I make reservation for three people. Do I also need to add the names? No. No, it's the, the, if you make a reservation, it'll come up as just your name. We don't need the other names. But if you make a reservation and then the other two people in your party make a reservation, we might come track you down and say something too. <laughs> One second, Miss, right behind you. Now, and I'm not in a uh, place to make reservations. It's not on, a, you're in the dining tab right now, so you'll have to go back a section, Just and then it'll say full, or resident portal full count. Now, if you've had the, the app open, yeah. and changes it's have been cool. made, yeah. you will have to Most close out the app and restart it. Start it. Sometimes it takes one or two times. Oh, okay, because I don't oh, get it up. And I've had no problem doing anything on the app. I have two questions. I want to know about a meal a day. When is the last time we can change? And I would like to know how to go about when we do not have a computer or a smart. So meal of the day officially goes into effect or any plan that you've chosen, bistro or otherwise, officially goes into effect tomorrow, July 1st. The last day that you can change it is October 1st. You can change it at some point in between in the next 90 days 
and get a feel for it and flex, and then you are locked in come October 1st. If you do not have a computer, you do not have a smartphone, you do not have a tablet, and feel free, come to the host desk. The same place that you would walk up right now and say, hey, I would like a table for two, you can walk up and say, hey, I would like reservations for two. It's the same if that is available, if there is space and time available, yes, yes. Reader, we will not make anybody go hungry. We're committed to 31 days of reservations. Is it at all possible to get a menu for 31 days so we know what's coming up? Mitch, Mitch asked if, if we can get a menu for 31 days. If, we're, if you're committed to reservations for 31 days. Now, um, show of hands, who knows where they're gonna eat next Tuesday? Yeah, I'd say about half the, half, half the property knows where they're gonna eat on any given day. You know the menu in the restaurant, where we're gonna eat. Okay, Mary, you raised your hand. You know where you're gonna eat Tuesday. Do you care what the menu is? Tuesday. Okay, do you know what the menu is? Uh, yes. Do you, do you know where you're going to eat in two weeks? No. Oh, do you, are you going to make reservations for two weeks out? Yes, I can eat. Well, I'm going to eat here in two weeks. You are going to be eating here in two weeks. Yes. So you might as well just make a reservation. Exactly. Okay. I'll take it as it comes. Perfect. I can always find yes. something So we do have some people that eat every single day at 5 or 5.30 at the same table six, seven days a week, regardless of anything. Regardless of the menu, regardless of the weather. I mean, well, unless there's a hurricane. They, they really do have the same schedule. So at that point, that's where the 31 days comes into play. If you don't want to eat, and you don't know, maybe Diane, maybe Diane wants to uh, go out to Swordfish, at that point, she's not going to make a reservation. I, oh, you're going to hold it. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a comment about the presentation itself. And I'm not blaming just uh, Dustin or if you have a plan and whoever does this, because you can't read what's being presented. It's so small. The fonts need to be increased tremendously because none of us could see what. That's the so the presentations do need to be bigger. Unfortunately, for the back row to be able to read it, we would only have about three letters per screen. And it would take us hours to get through it. However, there is going to be the same exact thing up on YouTube, and at which point you can put your nose right up to the screen later on. How do you get it through the PC? So I believe, Dustin? I emailed a link, or I emailed a kind of spreadsheet or a form with the link on it. If you want, you can email me. I'll email you the link. Um, I'm fine with the phone. I'm fine with the phone, but a lot of people don't have a phone. Right. And it might be easier on, the, on a tablet, or however you do it, like a computer or a tablet, it's a bigger screen. It might be easier for you to do the reservation. Somebody asked for my email, it's windsordustin at regencioseniorliving.com. This is just a comment about the changing of your meal plans. I've talked to a lot of people who've been here for many years, and some of them think they're already on meal today because that's what they had when they came and they go every day and, and everything, but you still need to fill out the form from the front desk. It has an effective date up at the right hand corner, so you can fill it up and turn it in any time before the middle of September for the October effective date. But make sure everybody fills one out, otherwise you automatically will stay on what you have, I guess. So yes, there will be a paper audit as far as us going through and figuring out who signed up what. Hold on, Tony, I'm coming to you right now. Don't get up. Question for the whole place here. How many people actually wait a long time to get called 
to dinner, but the way the system is now. How many people are waiting for a table? So the question is, is who's waiting for tables? And it really comes down to when you come in, what times you come in, and whether it's the north, the south, the pub, Yes. Yes. And then the people that show up. Yes. Okay. So Tony, Tony doesn't see a whole lot of people waiting. Um, I can promise you there are that they are there. It, yes. Does anybody else have any other one question? Okay. So you need to know the original site. Do you have email? Talk to Dustin and he will be more than happy to help you out. Is there the option in this to change a reservation? So the question was, can she change a reservation? Say all of a sudden her daughter called her up and said, hey, I'm making your favorite lamb stew. I want you to come over tonight. How does she cancel and or change a reservation? So I, I came back to your reservations tab on here, where it has your list of all of the reservations. For our reservation there on Tuesday, right to the left it says edit. So at that point you can click edit and adjust any of your parameters for that reservation. Can you put zero down? Zero? It might let you do that. I don't see the edit. The edit would be right about up here. You can? Yes, you can cancel and start over, but... What if you just cancel your name? Yes. So she asked about canceling reservations. So all the way over to the right, if you hit cancel, it'll pull it off of your list altogether. So I actually had to cancel some people's reservations because they did it for lunch time. Right. A couple other things I wanted to add with a few of the questions that came about. If you're making reservations in person, if it's the peak time of dining, I can't have you give me a list of these are my reservations for the week or for the month. We have to plug in each reservation individually. So that means if, even if it's for the week, we would have to plug in five or seven reservations. And I can't tie up the host while we have people to see reservations coming in. So that's where lunchtime I think will be the best to do a lot of the reservations because I should have a host up at the host desk at lunchtime and it's not as busy at dinner time, which is why we're not doing reservations for lunchtime. What about July 4th? Probably so this coming July 4th is still on paper. We kind of put that out last week. Um, we should be having a special day like where it has dinner and then Sunday dinner. There should be a separate one just for holidays in the future. So keep an eye out and look at that. We had a question about, um, say you have a standing group table, like a res uh, friendship table. How would we do reservations for that? Or would it be just a, there's a standard res uh, reservation for the friendship table and you're just more than welcome to join? That'll be ever evolving. Um, when it comes to the welcome table. The friendship table, um, Ruth, I thought I saw here. With the friendship table, I don't know if you wanna make reservations for the friendship table to have it when we're going to have it, and it'd be treated just like a reservation. Um, I know some people have, this is my Monday group, this is my Wednesday group, where plug in your reservation for each week with that, and then assign somebody to be the, the reservation leader or Rotate around, but. Yeah, the, the menu in my question. Oh, uh, what's your question? Currently, I, I reserve friendship table for the month. Uh, will I be able to do it there? Yeah, we would just take it just like a res regular reservation. So for, for each day, we'll plug it in. And the welcome table also? The welcome table's touchy, because I heard some people saying, well, that'll just be the walk-in table, and I'll be able to go right in there. 
but I know the welcome people have kind of asked some people to not come every time because the table's getting full and now it's not letting others in. So that might be a self-regulating militia there. But um, the welcome table. In the South, that has happened, yes. And the people that were leading the South group, I think we had people there every time and it was a full table. But I can, we can talk more about that with the welcome table and the friendship table too. Ooh, I'll, I'll get you set up. I have a question over here. Go for it. Just clarifying a couple things. When you have a party of more than two, people that you always sit with, does one person make a reservation for that entire table? Yes, it's one reservation per table. Okay. So. so every couple doesn't call in or get in and make their own reservation, and then they go sit together? Correct. No, it's, okay. if it's two couples, for, so a table for four, that'd be one person making a reservation for four. Okay. Because if you'll start pulling tables, available tables away from others at that point. Okay, thank you. The second question is when the pub is open, uh -huh. do we go on the online and make a reservation at the same time? Say we're doing it for the month. Do we make a reservation for the pub at the same time we make the reservation for the dining room? Because it doesn't show up there right now. So right, is that yes. a separate is that a separate place? So in that list where it says like South Dining Room, your dinner, your Sunday dinner, North, then there'd be a pub section okay. with the different parameters there. Um, so make your reservations as you wish. What is the protocol for, res for uh, carry out with the reservation system? We won't need a reservation for that because you're carrying out. So that'll be a walk up service just like it currently is. <laughs> Yes, sir. Could I, could I go to the front desk now and make reservations for a group for the gourmet dinner? Um, the gourmet lists are still on paper, so we'll gradually migrate everything over to this, but eventually yeah. the gourmet will be on here, but right now it's still on paper in our book. But you can still go to the host desk and make your reservation. So these are going to start July 1st. It'll kind of be an ease into it with the emphasis on Sunday, July 3rd. Got a question over here? Uh, what if you're at an appointment and you don't know when you're going to be there? Again, so we want everybody to do reservations. If you happen to have things change and are a walk up, you're gonna get asked, do you wanna come back at the most, the closest time? So that could be 15 minutes from now, that could be at the time that you walk in, or if you're coming in at five, it might be like, uh, we're having a busy day, and do you wanna come back at 6.30? So walk up to that point will still be accepted, but you might be waiting an extensive amount of time. If I make a reservation for 31 days, and I don't show up for three, do I get fined? Just you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not meal credits. Yeah. 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 Okay, this is the last question and then uh, we're off to uh, another party. Tonight, by all means, yes, yes. We ask that moving forward, which is tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you.